Mingling with the rush hour traffic, Red Army armoured personnel carriers on the streets of Moscow this morning, heading to the Kremlin. They first moved in at 4 a.m., the first sign of the coup d'etat that removed Mikhail Gorbachev from power. With tanks in Red Square, the official word from the new government calling itself the National Emergency Committee was that the architect of Glasnost and Perestroika was too ill to continue in office. A short statement reminiscent of the Soviet Union's past was broadcast by state television. На основании статьи 127.7 Конституции СССР вступил в исполнение обязанностей президента СССР с 19 августа 1991 года вице-президент СССР Янаев. By mid-morning, APCs were ringing the Defence Ministry and most government buildings. From many people on the streets, the reaction was one of sheer surprise and resignation. Others pinned their hopes on non-communist politicians to come to the nation's aid. Tanks were also positioned outside the Russian parliament building, Boris Yeltsin's headquarters. The democratically elected president of Russia was soon striding out of the building to address a crowd of supporters. His own radio and television stations by now occupied and forced off the air, he climbed aboard one of the Red Army's own tanks and said the coup leaders had disgraced the Soviet Union. Они дискредитируют союз перед всем миром, подрывая наш престиж в мировом сообществе, возвращая нас к эпохе холодной войны и изоляции Советского Союза в мирового сообщества. Все это заставляет нас объявить незаконным пришедшей к власти так называемый комитет. Соответственно, объявляем незаконными все решения и распоряжения этого комитета. And he went further, calling for civic resistance to the hardline grab of power. Обращаемся к военнослужащим с призывом проявить высокую гражданственность и не принимать участие в реакционном перевороте. До выполнения этих требований призываем к всеобщей бессрочной забастовке. Yeltsin supporters reacted with their bare hands, building makeshift barricades with whatever piece of disused machinery or brickwork was available. And one crane driver joined the effort, shifting concrete blocks to the delight of the crowd, helping build the obstacles designed to prevent any army attempt to seize the Russian parliament building. No attempt was made. One army commander loyal to Boris Yeltsin, Colonel Konstantin Kobyets, tried to reassure the crowd. Что все, кто носит военную форму, у которых бьется нормальное, честное сердце гражданина России, никогда не позволит того, чтобы армия выступила против своего народа. И поэтому в этих условиях сейчас важно первое – не дать спровоцировать никому себя. And with Radio Russia and Russian television prevented from giving independent information, leaflets were soon pouring out of the Russian parliament's windows to give people the latest news. The nation's new rulers didn't appear in person until late afternoon. They called a news conference. Gennady Yanayev, the man who until yesterday was Mikhail Gorbachev's vice president, confirming the transfer of power and saying Mr. Gorbachev needed time to rest. Mikhail Sergeyevich Gorbachev находится в полной безопасности, ему ничего не угрожает. Единственное, надо определенное время для того, чтобы он просто восстановил свои силы. Но в таком режиме, дамы и господа, работать, в каком работал президент Горбачев все эти последние шесть лет, 
Естественно, и, и организм изнашивается немножко. Я надеюсь, что мой друг, президент Горбачев, будет в строю, и мы будем еще вместе работать. Inayev was Gorbachev's choice for the vice presidency last December, a choice many radicals said had been forced on him by conservatives within the government. Backing his grab for power today was the head of the KGB, Vladimir Kriuchkov, a man who has not hidden his animosity towards the country's fledgling democratic steps. Boris Pugo, the interior minister, is also a member of the emergency committee. His troops were responsible for the killing of Lithuanians seeking independence earlier this year. And Gorbachev's prime minister, Valentin Pavlov, also turned against the man who promoted him. Only last week he said the country's new treaty of union could result in a power vacuum in the Soviet Union. Today, the men who say they took action to prevent that also said they were as committed to reforming the Soviet Union as Gorbachev himself. Я хочу сказать, что мы надеемся, мы надеемся на то, что Михаил Сергеевич, поправившись, вернется к исполнению своих обязанностей. По крайней мере, тот курс, который начинал Михаил Сергеевич Горбачев в 1985 году, Этому курсу мы будем следовать и дальше. One of the committee's first actions was to silence Moscow's Radio Eco, the first news radio station independent of the Soviet state. This afternoon, journalists continued to prepare programs as usual, unable to transmit them to the people. At 7:55 a.m., uh, KGB men came here and said that we must stop broadcasting. Uh, they they stood here just around us. Also taken off the streets, reformist publications like the news weekly Ogunyok. The latest edition of the magazine, directly associated with Glasnost, was rolling off the presses only last Friday. From tomorrow, just nine newspapers will be permitted to publish, all of them, like Pravda, supportive of the Communist Party and Marxism-Leninism. Tonight, state television's news program broadcast pictures of the events at the Russian parliament building, as well as calls for a general strike. And details of a big demonstration in Leningrad were given, the news program apparently seeking to show that despite the toppling of Gorbachev, some pluralism of views would be permitted. In the past, Soviet people have always been able to remember where they were when they heard of Stalin's death. Today, a generation of Muscovite children will remember where they were when their fathers showed them tanks on the streets of the Soviet capital. Tonight, tanks are still in position around the Kremlin, the new leaders installed inside, former President Mikhail Gorbachev believed to be at his summer home on the Black Sea, unseen and unheard by the Soviet people today. Tomorrow, Gorbachev was due to preside over the signing ceremony for the new Treaty of Union, the document that would have changed the face of the Soviet Union by giving more power to the republics and less to the center. The signing ceremony has been cancelled. With opposition parties and public demonstrations banned, those who have spent the last six years trying to bring democracy to the Soviet Union will now have to break the law to spread their ideas. For World Monitor, I'm Simon Marks in Moscow.